Anyhow, tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, so essentially, I am a native Houstonian. I work in different uh, areas, um, allowing fluidity to kind of help with any progressive uh, platform and really amplifying the voices of uh, black and brown communities the most, especially AAPI, because I resonate uh, with them. And I am a mediator, so I work in alternative dispute resolution. Um, and most of the time, I like to be uh, pretty, uh, pretty fluid when it comes to like labels, right? I don't consider myself an activist or anything like that. It's really just a community organizer mm -hmm. um, that I identify with and um, I help when help is needed, right? And and constantly making sure that we're helping and our black and brown communities, not just and preventing them any harm, right? Um, uh, and that's really it in a nutshell. Um, I, I stay pretty low key and I, I like to go a little bit, um, I like to help all communities in the best way and particularly marginalized communities because I, I am in a marginalized person in a marginalized community. So that really hits home for me. So you consider um, yourself a marginalized person as well? Yeah, I do. Is that, well, your last name is Syed. I, I don't like to make assumptions. Are you, yeah. uh, uh, how do you classify? Sure. So I am a Muslim minority Shia. Mm -hmm. And so um, I am mixed as well. We, I have a, a huge family, a very large diaspora. And so, um, you know, between the first and third generation, we have Indian, Pakistani, Iranian, Mongolian, and African. So I'm a little bit of a mutt, you could call, but uh, I, 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 I am mixed, and, and, and so I identify with a lot of um, marginalized folks as well, um, just because I feel like I can resonate with what they're experiencing. Um, you know, one of the biggest things I've learned is I didn't realize I was a marginalized person within a marginalized community until I was in my adult life. What does that mean? So essentially, I thought I was really privileged uh, growing up. You know, I I lived in a, a really white part of town, daughter of immigrants, right? Um, granddaughter of refugees and expats. And um, I was put in really good schools. Um, and I thought, you know, I, I, my parents, they gave up a lot to come to this country and, 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 and put me in a place uh, of privilege and um, not realizing that because I'm a Muslim minority, um, I have been pushed to a different part of Houston in a niche that, you know, um, has historically um, been oppressed. So like they, they move our communities to different areas and they don't allow us to assimilate the same way into white neighborhoods. So it's just so interesting. Um, and so I, I, I didn't realize what that was or what that looked like until I was an adult. So it's just been interesting, the journey that I've had um, in, in, in my life. And so where are your I parents have... originally from? You said they're immigrants. See, I'm an immigrant, so I have a lot of, uh, I, I, I can feel, I, I probably feel with your parents. Uh, where are they yeah. from originally? Yeah, so uh, my, my mother, she was born in northern uh, Pakistan, but she didn't actually live there. She grew up in Uganda mm -hmm. and she was there during um, Idi Amin's time. Oh, interesting enough. Yeah. And then she came to the U.S. And then my father, he also was born in Pakistan, but he didn't live there. He lived in Iran before the revolution. Uh, so then he came to the U.S. So both of them have just such interesting stories and journeys that brought them to the U.S. Now, interestingly, um, one of the, th when, when we started talking about, uh, uh, coming on and talking about your experiences at the uh, at the rally, mm -hmm. or should I say the protest for George uh, Floyd, mm -hmm. um, uh, you seem to be a little bit hesitant to talk. Why exactly? Sure. No, I, I, that's, that's a valid question. Uh, essentially, while I was there, uh, historically, I have helped with protests in the past. I've helped organize. I've been really under the radar because I think it's important to amplify black voices at this time and I try to create intentional spaces uh, for black voices and hear from our black siblings. Um, while I was at the protest I was followed a few times. Um, when I was uh, giving out, passing out, distributing mask gloves um, from my car moving from 
discovery green to city hall um i was followed two two times there where people would show up behind me and start taking uh, videos from inside of their cars of my license plate uh you know while i got out of my car to pass out gloves and masks and so it 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 is um I, it is a little bit um that's why I am a little bit hesitant because, you know, when you're followed, it, it can be dangerous. And so I also want to make sure that um, we are maintaining that safety in that regard as well. So now, do you have a feeling if these uh, people that were following you were undercover police officers, right wing uh, uh, sympathizers, or do you have any feeling or gut feeling as to what that was? I'm not sure. You know, I came into the protest. Um, specifically to avoid that so essentially i i didn't use my actual car i had gotten a rental for that day um you know whenever you're carrying uh items or things that need to be organized for an action you want to also keep yourself safe and make sure that you're um, in a in a space to provide resources to humans and so um, sometimes people will will have different types of intentions um, when you are out there uh, in the field and so you know it's important to protect yourself in those situations i i have no idea what kinds of human beings uh, i was being followed by but i know that i was followed by an unmarked car at one point i was followed by um, a car with houston plates uh, and at another point i was followed by a really large suburban so i don't know i can't mm. really assume based off the car uh, but i know i was followed so now, uh, you said you were giving out uh, PPEs. Um, were there t just a whole lot of people there unprotected as if uh, we're not going through a pandemic in your opinion? So that's a great question. So essentially, uh, in terms of my involvement, I was, I was made aware about 48 hours in advance. Um, so we had a few days to get any resources that we were able to, because that's how community organizing works at, at a grassroots level. And we had um, gotten things ourselves, right? Any kind of mask, gloves, hand sanitizers. And there are also um, organizational efforts from, let's say, Black Lives Matter, of the Houston chapter. They also raised funds for those items as well that, and they also worked with OCA. OCA um, is a is a great organization um, advocating for AAPI communities, and um, they work um, in the communities just advancing um, social, political, and economic well-being of AAPI. And and they were there also with boxes and gloves. And and I was working with um, Debbie Chen, who works uh, in OCA, and and we together collectively we were passing and distributing and. Um, in terms of uh, the equipment that we were passing out, it was really whatever we could get our hands on at that point, uh, just because it was done at such a such a bare bones level. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that Debbie Chen was able to work with OCA and bring all of those things was amazing, and bring volunteers. Um, they, you know, OCA Greater Houston and uh, the Shabu House donated like two thousand gloves and masks to support. Um, the action and there was uh, the majority of people were uh, observing social distancing and the majority of human beings present also uh, try to uh, be as safe as possible there are some outliers that didn't feel like they needed gloves and that's okay but we try to be there and be present and provide that to everyone there so Tell me a little bit. You said the OCA donated 2,000 PPEs, and um, mm -hmm. Debbie Chen is one of the representatives or uh, of, of, mm -hmm. of that organization. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, from my understanding, OCA Greater Houston and the Shabu House, there's two orgs uh, that came collectively together to donate uh, mass increments uh, in bulk of gloves uh, and. Um, masks and hand sanitizer and so did a lot of individuals in fact as a matter of fact we had uh, just individuals just just great civilians that would just come up to our table and be like i brought water it's packaged i brought boxes for you and just all types of um you know support from every single person uh that that could um and was privileged enough to brought us things as well so i, I feel like it was the community effort yeah, uh, tell us, uh, who exactly is OCA Greater Houston? 
Yeah, so it's a nonprofit organization, as I said, um, and they advance the social, political, and economic well-being of AAPI in the community. They do a lot of work, um, let's say, uh, they You they just use a on... term that a lot of our audience wouldn't know, AAPI? Yeah, Asian American Pacific Islanders. Excellent. Um, they they do a lot of advocacy for you know making sure that we collect data appropriately on the census, um, making sure that we are representing our you know Chinese communities appropriately, um, and and they and they work a lot with um, uh, you know providing scholarships, um, making sure that they are there as a you know a umbrella for all organizations to kind of come together and, and work together and, and create meaningful change in communities. Um, they advocate for Asian Asian Pacific Americans and 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 they hope to um, you know increase that voting block as well. And um, there's so many different human beings a part of that organization. So it's great. I, I urge everyone to take the opportunity to learn a little bit about them. And um, what's interesting is uh, I work with the New Leaders Council, mm -hmm. and they're also a progressive organization that um, is training the next, uh, you know, generation of leaders. And a lot of my NLC cohort and alum are a part of OCA. Stephen Wu is vice president of OCA. Debbie Chen is also an NLC alum. So it was nice to um, work with um, humans that, you know, we know, but also haven't seen in a while uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> because of COVID um, and work collectively um, from just all avenues of, um, you know, organizing, so. Now tell me a little bit now, now that we've we kind of got that uh, packed, tell me mm -hmm. what was your experience at the March in general? Do you think it was, um, how effective do you think it was? Great question. So I, I feel like that action was put on in the best of intentions, right? We needed to bring awareness uh, about George Floyd, him being a Houston native. Um, you know, he historically, he, if you read a little bit about him, he was a part of the original screwed up clique. And so he does have such ties in the Houston community, he went to Yates High. And so he, he, he was a member of our, our, our town, our city. So the fact that we could show up for him, first of all, is, 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 is amazing that we could be present for this human being that had his life taken away. Um, number two, I will say that in terms of my experience, it was all hands on deck, right? Within a short period of time. And so not everything will go exactly the way that we want or exactly the way that we planned, but the fact that we were there to share space, create a platform, be present and, and protect our black and brown communities from harm is like the biggest thing I know for me. Um, even if I was out there by myself for two hours passing out water, to people who came to be a part of the procession or bringing six tables in my car, renting a car to put six tables in my car to come and then create stations to pass and distribute gloves, masks, and everything that we could. It is the least that I could do, mm -hmm. right? It, it is, it is uh, not even in comparison to what so many other human beings um, experienced and, and had the ability to do. Um, a lot of our... Um, Black siblings were able to come together, have meaningful conversation, um, have individuals speak up about their own experiences, about what we can do better. They were able to, um, you know, come to Discovery Green, um, and we had all types of human beings present. I, I you know, Houston's the most diverse city to me in the U.S. and so we had it was just so nice to see support from so many human beings and I think that one of the things I won't forget is uh, a, a white woman she was a pastor she came up to me she's like how do I stay engaged I've never been to something like this how am I going to support the black community and so it was so interesting that there was such you know heartfelt um engagement for so, from so many people and from Discovery Green to City Hall um, it was it was in an orderly fashion. People had their signs. There was there were signs in their hands, and and they went from Discovery Green to City Hall, um, without any kind of um, alarming, you know, um, or extremist uh, 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 things happening. I, I we didn't hear or see anything that was uh, too. Um, wild or anything until after city hall until after the organizers were kind of ending the action and, and that's when things kind of spiraled out of con 
control a little bit in terms of the um, the level of intensity. I think there was some damage in on some streets where people were breaking windows uh, uh, in some of the streets. Is that right? After the fact, yeah, I, I didn't explicitly see that until and I, you know, from discovery to City Hall, when I got into my car to take the rest of the things to City Hall and then start passing out things by hand, like, mind you, after we packed up items at Discovery Green, I then got into my car and passed out things from inside of my car mm -hmm. on the same path to City Hall, right? I took my car, followed the rally, followed strangers, and I passed out. And even to the, even anybody that was precariously housed or homeless, I passed out masks, gloves, um, water bottles to anyone on the street on the same pathway to City Hall. And from, from, from Discovery, you can see I didn't see anything wild. Um, it wasn't until after the fact when I was leaving that we they, they started seeing a large gathering of people going to then loot or damage or um, going into the freeway. So that was after the fact. And I, now, I, to the best of to the best of your knowledge, were those those weren't the people that organized the event, but uh, infiltrators. To me, I feel like um, I didn't explicitly see any organizers no leading anyone. What I saw was. Um, different types of agitators, different types of human beings, um, then taking it upon themselves to just go out and do whatever they wanted at that point. And again, there's no control over that. Um, all you can do is keep human beings safe. Um, and so what I did when once I saw people, you know, disseminating after City Hall, uh, going back into the streets, kind of just doing their own thing, I started passing out even more waters like, hey, stay hydrated, stay safe. Um, in the best way and, and, and passed out more things um, at the end of it. And, and, and I didn't stay too long after that because there started being um, a lot more um, physical assaults. Uh, people started fighting. There were people showing up with rifles, trying to instill fear in communities, in the youth and to protesters. So I, I at that point, didn't feel as comfortable as I, as I would have wanted. When you say and people started showing up in, with rifles, are you talking about pretty much right wingers or others? I can't label anybody. Um, all I know is um, I saw several white men with rifles uh, and and a lot of, you know, they, they had guns with them. Right. And and I was like, ah, this is turning into something that I wasn't expecting. I was shocked. Right. So. Well, yeah, well, at least it didn't turn into anything. Let me tell you, um, Sarah. I appreciate you spending some time with me to give us an yeah. account of, of your experiences at uh, mm -hmm. the rallies for George Floyd. And I want to thank you for the hard work that you do there in, in the progressive movement, in the movement that um, is trying to make life better for all of us. So thank you so kindly. Thank you so much for uh, having this conversation, creating this space. I appreciate you. Absolutely. I'm Egberto Willis, host of Politics Done Right, an independent news program. I post several news videos of interest every day. I ask you so kindly to subscribe to my channel and please leave me some comments. Thank you very much.